What's up everybody? Effortless Roller again. We out here flying the hens. Nothing special. This is their fourth day out. They've been on lockdown since the migration. Um, but still need a lot of work. I got some pretty deep ones in here. But uh, they don't really have the chemistry down that well yet. So I'm pushing them up until they start kidding like the cockbirds. I decided to put my cockbirds to fly um, every three days. You know, I've been, I have a lot of projects to do. So I gotta focus on that. So this year's, I'm not gonna be focusing on flying too much. I'm just gonna put up my birds for the hell of it. Um, and hopefully I get something good. Um, but I probably won't be breeding until like later, later anyways. Only put the pairs down that, uh, I put in the auction donation, but the rest is going to be up to, uh, it's going to be separated and whatnot. So kind of want to put that out there. Oh man, something scared the birds. But yeah, you know, the chemistry on this kit isn't as great. Um, just because they've been on lockdown for so long um, getting them to lift is the one thing now, now my hen kit tends to fly a little bit higher than my cock birds and I don't know if you guys noticed that when you fly your birds but these hens are smaller and I've always said smaller birds tend to fly high um, the cockbirds will fight the wind down low and whatnot. The hens will usually just fly up higher. I don't know if anybody got the experience like that, but I do. Um, guys, let me know. Are my videos too long? Do they bore you? Because if they do, I can start cutting it shorter. Um, you know, my goal in this was just to make a few videos and just share what I have and put it up. Oof. But yeah, you know, like, it's just something um, to do, to kill time. Um, I'm not getting ready for competition or anything soon, so I'm not worried about it. But uh, yeah, yesterday they flew up and they went all the way up to the clouds. And we had moving clouds here. And the cloud got underneath them. And I was like, oh shoot, I lost the kit. I did lose a few out of this kit already. From that cloud um but i got majority of them back i got 19 back i think there was like 24 birds so i lost a few in there but it is what it is i'm not gonna sweat it um things happen i don't feed my birds to fly high but you know some i noticed my hands will do it my cock birds rarely do it well my hands will do it but my cockbirds are also getting really frequent. Um, wow, these hens are just learning the area again. So, big difference. But putting them up for the hell of it. Um, but yeah, see if you guys got the same thing. Let me know if my videos are too long or whatnot. Um, I can start cutting it shorter. I like to just ramble about things. Experiences I've gone through. And... Uh, share with you guys you know but nothing fancy nothing going on oh yeah let's talk about kidding and chemistry guys so we the few guys here what they'll do is they'll fly a kid of birds and they'll pick all the good committing birds right the birds that commit to the raw okay they'll pick these birds out the kit move them into another kit and you know even if the kid is has good chemistry they'll move it out you know so they'll move one bird and the next month they'll move another bird and they'll put all these birds that commit to the role into one kid eventually create a kit now by doing that i believe it does work to an extent i believe it works geez i lost the kit oh there but um 
I also feel like that takes a lot of time to build a team. And honestly, if my young bird is popping it and they're doing it right, I'll leave them alone. And I wouldn't take out those birds. I'll probably fly them a little bit less so that they're not overworking themselves. Because a lot of times, you got to admit, those birds that commit to those roles, they're going to be burning a lot more energy than birds that aren't rolling. Okay? So I'll hold them back. But I don't believe in taking them out. Because even though the rest isn't committing to the role and there's a lot of chaos up there, um, you know, they, they learn to, to roll and come back to the kit as one. And even there's, there's birds and they're fluttering and whatnot. To me, you know, if it's not competition, I'm not too anal about it. I'll leave it alone. As long as the kit's popping together and mimicking rolls, I'll leave it alone. And honestly, I feel like those few good birds in there will teach the kid to commit to the role eventually. But if you start taking those birds out, then you're going to have a whole bunch of birds that just mimics. And they just never get better at that at all. They don't know how to handle deep birds. They don't know how to come back for the kid. You know, you create more chaos, in my opinion, by pick, taking those birds out. But like I said, everybody does it their own way. I don't like to move birds around. Now, if competition comes, yeah, I'll I'll pick the the ones who come in the role, and I'll put them together. Usually, competition gives us like a few months ahead notice. We kind of have an idea when we're gonna fly, so you got all the time to fly those good birds, you know. And I feel like a good bird it shouldn't take too long to bounce back. And but if you take them out of the kit that's just developing, you're not going to improve that kit that well. That's just my opinion again. I could be wrong, but you know we'll we'll see in a few we'll see in a few months. You know, like I, I'm thinking about flying in the, in the fall season in the NBRC. Um, but if the World Cup is back for sure, and depending on if I get hit with a lot of BOPs or not. But, you know, I like to put that there in the test, you know. I have a few birds that I have eyeballing. I know that, you know, if I have competition, man, that bird would be great in a kit. So I, I have a kit like that where I, I, I do know which birds I want to pull and do that. Um, and I'll give it a shot. But, you know, flying like this, like every day in my backyard, I don't take them out of these kits. I feel like what they do up here with these non-rollers and tumblers whatever you want to call them it builds teamwork it builds chemistry and it builds you know like the ability to do well i mean like for example on my block let's say there's 10 kids and one of them is just a natural dribbler you know he's a natural you know one guy he's just a three-point shooter you know whatever the other guy is just straight up big body you get him close to the net, he'll make other people work for it. You know? It might not be the... And then they could be playing with, like, just average Joes, you know? But if you take those three big bodies and you put them into a team, you know, they'll know what to do. You know, it's not going to take much for them to shine again. You know? And I feel the same thing about birds. If there are a few superstars in here, you know, you should be able to... To pinpoint them out when you need them but if you don't you should just be perfectly fine leaving them in there you know like they're still gonna play ball they're still gonna have fun you know so that's how I look at it and I don't take those birds out I leave them in there you know and who knows they might even teach the other average Joes how to play how to dribble how to body up you know next thing you know you got a block full of kids that just have fun basketball have fun whatever sports they're playing you know but if you take out those three kids what's the rest they got nobody to bounce off they got no, nobody to motivate them you know so to me i just kind of feel like if you leave them alone but if you use them when you need them you know like they're gonna shine no matter what um i could be wrong but we'll give it a shot guys we'll give it a shot 
Um, hopefully the BOPs aren't too bad. I only got I only got a hen kit and a cock kit. Um, I got 19 hens right now, and I think I got like a little more cock birds. So, you know, I'll, I'll go through them when competition come, and I'll put the best ones together, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I know guys that will just pick out their best ones and put them in a kit. And, you know, like, they'll fly for competition. And they roll great. Don't get me wrong. They roll great. They're naturalists. But, you know, I just, to me, you know, like, when I build a team, I don't like to do that. Because, you know, you breed you breed out a whole kit. You know what I mean? You breed out a whole kit. And I think when you start picking out all the good birds and you leave all the bad birds, of course they're going to be calls. Of course. There's no doubt about it. There's nobody there willing to make the team drop far enough. There's nobody there to motivate the team to, to roll deep anymore. You know? And, and if you take those deep birds out, they don't know what to do with the deep bird now. You know? All they know is to fly fast. Because, hey, guess what? If you can't roll, guess what? You want to be the fastest runner, right? <laughs> you can't dribble the ball. You might as well be the fastest you know like runner in the team where you can just be in the field all day long you don't feel tired you know those guys come in handy too you know give the good guys rest <laughs> so as far as i'm concerned you know that's how i look at it when i train a team you know i don't want to just focus on one team i want to make sure you know like all my young birds have good birds in there to motivate each other and um hopefully you know like my goal is to you know, I have six kit boxes. My goal is to have all six kit boxes be a threat, you know? Have good birds in each one of those where if I put them all up, you know, they're not going to do any different or much different from one from another, you know, where they just come out and they just pop, pop, pop. The chemistry is fun to watch, you know? That's what I, my goal is. So I don't believe in, like, moving birds. But for competition, that's different, okay? That's different. Um... And if competition comes, you know, you got time to put your best stuff together and see if they work. You know, let's admit, you know, watching the Pro Bowl is pretty damn boring. I'll tell you that. You know, I'd rather watch a regular season game. You know, it's more intense when the whole team is together and they're they're trying to win versus, you know, all these uh, Pro Bowlers, you know, playing together top players top ranked players put them together oh it's gonna be awesome no boring so that's how i look at it that's how i train my birds um but yeah i just bring that up to your attention i don't know who trains like me um but i do i believe in like that so i'll leave these birds alone and i want to show them off later on and see how the chemistry goes but yeah guys you know like just wanted to talk a little bit of something about training and whatnot. Sorry to babble on. Again, let me know if my content is boring you or if it's too dang long. I would love to sh cut it short. But, you know, when, when we get to a topic like this, I think it's interesting to see and share knowledge, experiences, you know. So I want to hear what your experiences are, you know. Like, hit me up. Like, subscribe. Um, it will help me out a lot. Not only that, but you know, um, just share your knowledge. You know, like this is supposed to be a hobby we all enjoy and able to share our notes together. But you know, hopefully, you know, you're open to it. But definitely, it's just something I like to talk about and enjoy them. But all right, guys, my ham kid ain't doing nothing much. They're just playing homers right now, which I don't blame them. Uh, they've been locked down for a while. So, I'll let you guys go. But, yeah, Effortless Roller, we out, okay? Hit me up. Let me know what your, your training method is for your kids. All right. Bye, guys.